Featuring Drake University football, head football coach Rob Ash and your host Mick Trier. Brought to you in part by Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leaders. And by Home Team Pizza, free, fast delivery. It's a hit. Well, things certainly got a little scary out in San Diego for the Drake Bulldogs as they made the long trip out there. Coach, congratulations. Things did get a little scary. 9 nothing final score wasn't over until it was over. It was a great game, Mick. A great championship football game out in San Diego. The, the Toreros played a super game. They were fired up because they thought they could win the league. They had an honest chance to win the league, and they had to get by us. But our guys played the most inspired football I've ever seen a team play. We weren't going to be denied on that night, and we won it. Of course, a lot of the uh, folks were wondering just how the Bulldogs would come out after playing Dayton, of course, where you had a uh, just play, you know, they had nothing to lose on that one. But this one, you had a lot to lose, the conference championship. Well, it was a whole different scenario. I mean, the Dayton game was, you know, they're the favorites. We've got to be the underdogs. We can play loose and carefree. Now, all of a sudden, one week later, we're in the driver's seat. We have to win. We've got everything to lose, almost nothing to gain because everybody expected us to beat San Diego. That's a new place for us to be, but we like it, Mick, and especially because our guys pulled it out. Well, congratulations. Of course, you told me four or five weeks ago, Coach, that you really like this football team. You like the uh, characteristic of it, and I think uh, we see why now. Well, we've got great leaders on this team, tremendous inspirational leaders on both sides of the ball and a great group of seniors. That's what you have to have to be a champion. Well, we got some great highlights coming up here for you to watch as the Drake Bulldogs pick up the championship with a win out in San Diego. We'll have the highlights coming up next. Quality. Style. Luxury. Everything you've come to expect from Buick. Selection. Service. Value. All you can expect when you visit Capital City Buick. From the Skylark to the Park Avenue Ultra, Capital City Buick offers Central Iowa's largest selection of new Buicks and has quietly built a reputation for genuine service, not pressure. Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leader. When Home Team Pizza delivers, we never know quite what to expect. You know what to expect. Home Team Pizza's here! Yeah! Home Team Pizza's here with the new Huger Hughes 20 inch pizza. Right now, get a single topping for only $9.99. Pick up for free delivery in Greater Des Moines, Ames, and Ankeny. What they do is simple. So simple it would be easy to miss it altogether. But they're making a difference. You see, drunk driving fatalities are down 32% in the last 10 years. And fatalities from teen drunk driving are down 60%. So to everyone who checks an ID, offers to call a cab, or helps a customer know when to say when, we extend our thanks. By doing what's right, you are making things better. A message from Budweiser. To make a great Sunday brunch, start with a great view. Add something colorful and healthy. And don't forget to add something a little sinful. Add something steamy and delicious and really pile it on. Then make sure you add the right stuff, like good friends. Sunday morning at the Capitol View Dining Room. Brunch at the Best Western Starlight Village downtown once, and you'll be back for more. And welcome back to the Rob A. Show. Well, Coach, kind of a, a fun trip for the uh, Drake Bulldogs, of course, a trip that you tell your players about going out to San Diego, the nice, warm San Diego. Tell me just a little bit about the trip. Well, it was really fun for our team, Mick. I mean, obviously the game had great implications, but it was, it was a, a great chance to get out to the West Coast, which a lot of our players never would have a chance to do. We flew out Thursday night and uh, got in late, and then Friday we practiced in the morning. Special treat there, Dennis McKnight, who used to play for Drake and was an NFL football player, spoke to our team Friday, really got them motivated for the game. Did a little sightseeing Friday afternoon, but we came right back to football meetings on, uh, on Friday night, and then Saturday we sat around all day, being a night game, but watched other games on TV. So in a lot of respects, it was a business trip, but it was also a chance for our guys to be in the nice weather, stayed at a nice hotel provided by University of San Diego. And then Sunday after the game, as you'll see at the end of this show, we, we had a chance to, to enjoy the weather too. So it was a, a mixture 
of, uh, you know, of sun and, and seriousness, and, uh, and we won the game, so it was about perfect. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of this football game, and as they were going in, did you, did you think the Bulldogs were businesslike? Very definitely, Mick. I was very proud of my team because it was a night game. It was a long wait. Uh, you know, the, all, the, uh, all the adrenaline going for coming out of the Dayton game and into this game. But this is our first offensive possession. You're going to see we're ready to play. First play of the game. Look at the hole for Jason Grove, uh, Charlie Schimberg, and, and uh, Matt Jones leading him up through there. Uh, great way to start the game off. Charlie Schimberg then his first carry of the game. I mean, we came out and, and said basically by what we were doing here. We're going to run the football in this game against their smaller, quicker, lighter, but very tough uh, defenders. Here's the sweep here. This play we ran a lot with great success. Jason Grove following Felix Gallagher and Matt Jones and the wideouts, Berkeley and Hoskins doing a tremendous job. And our crowd there, a loyal three or 400 Drake fans, mixture of parents and some West Coast alumni out there. Uh, here's uh, Charlie Schimberg on the trap up the middle of the, of the field. I'll have to try to alert you when that play's coming because it's uh, deceptive, hard to find Charlie, but we drove the ball right down. Again, big play here, that offensive line just grinding this thing out. 12 plays, Mick, 11 runs out of 12. We got down fourth and goal on the one. This is a surprise. We gave it to Char <laughs> oh. Charlie Schimberg. All year we've given it to Charlie down here, and he's always gotten it for us. And so before San Diego touched the ball, we were ahead 6 nothing. We missed the extra point. Uh, give them credit, though. They were ready to play, too. And they came out with some different formations than what we had seen. Matt Garvis, though, I mean, it doesn't take long for Matt to realize what's going on. He made one. That's one of his 21 tackles that he had in the game. And Matt did a great job all night long. They have a nice mixture of running game with play-action passing. And it's very difficult to spread you out all over the field. And their first drive went down into our territory. But look who's there. Uh, Matt Garvis with strong tackling at the point of attack. And then I think this is going to be a pass that's going to be batted down. Brian Andrews, just at the bottom of the screen there, 95, senior defensive end, uh, knocks the ball down and, and uh, got us out of that first drive. So, you know, our, our first uh, stab by each team, we came out the winners. We got the second possession here, and uh, uh, Fletcher with a great pass to Richie Hoskins. And at the end of the first quarter, it was uh, nine no or 6 nothing, and we were in very good shape here. We, we, we bogged down and had to punt, and then a very uncharacteristic thing for us, uh, snap over Matt Sneller's head. He's very alertly throws the ball out here, and John Kunster makes a catch. Ironically, that was about a 30-yard ball in the air, and John caught it and ended up being about three inches short of getting a first down. It would have been a miraculous save. As it was, San Diego had the ball in excellent field position here with an uncharacteristic mistake on our special teams, but the defense did a good job. Uh, you know, they came out here again with the, the short passing game and running game, but we were able to hold them to a field goal attempt. Uh, I'd like to tell you Tommy Becker blocked it. He doesn't, but watch how close he comes. I know this has got to be in people's minds when they play against us. He rushed his kick a little bit, pushed it to the left, and our defense bailed us out as they have so many times all year and got us out of that situation. We came out as we did most of the game. Uh, when we were backed up, we were able to make good plays and at least punt San Diego over the 50. That was going to be our goal throughout the game. There was a nice swing pass to Grove. Here's another passing attempt, and unfortunately, uh, Jeb Doherty, number seven, who has a lot of sacks and a lot of created turnovers, made a good play there. But our defense came through. Tremendous job there on the counter sweep. Guys staying home, playing their assignments. And now watch Jay Smirka, defensive tackle, is going to beat his man. You know, come through the line there and get a sack. And that was a key sack because they started on the 30, and the sack put them out past the 40. They couldn't even try a field goal. They had to punt. So twice now, defense bailed us out after the punt fake or the punt uh, problem and the fumble. Here's a nice run again. That same counter sweep. Jason Grove out running a guy behind and getting behind uh, uh, the blocks. And here's Charlie Schimberg. Right up the middle on the trap play. Great running, great open field running, great blocking in front of him. Uh, Charlie, being a fullback, can't outrun their corner. <laughs> he ran out of gas there a little bit, but it was a 62-yard run, our longest run from scrimmage this year. Charlie was winded, so we put Pete Lowe by him. He goes right to work, does just as well. You know, just another really good run. So, you know, we've got things going again on all cylinders. Great blocking out in front again. Uh, Grove getting one-on-one -on -one against the corner. That counter sweep was good all day. Uh, we got a penalty, however, that stopped us. It made it too hard for us to, to convert. and. Uh, Mike McKee comes in and drills the field goal, and, and we got an uh, important uh, extra cushion there, that 9 nothing that gave us, a, you know, made San Diego have to score twice. Now watch this play. Right after that score, uh, they fumbled. There's only 30 seconds left in the half, but they fumbled, and that gave us a chance to try a Hail Mary. Look at the bottom of the screen. Richie Hoskins on the outside is going to go up, 
and that ball went right through his hands, Mick. We could have scored on the last play of the half, maybe. Tough play for Richie, but, you know, we ended up with a real positive note right before the half. Got an exciting second half coming up. We need to show you some of our fine sponsors of the Rob Ash Show. Coach, you got to believe coming out in the second half, you knew you were going to have to play another half of hard football. Well, we were we were a little tired at halftime, but very motivated, uh, Mick, because we knew we only had 30 minutes left to win the championship. But San Diego got inspired at halftime, too. They came out with running their sweep a little bit tighter. They cut it almost like a cutback type of thing when they get across the center. And we, we had some problems there on the first couple of plays in the in the third quarter. And then our defense, you know, stiffened up. We were very difficult to... To, uh, to move in the middle. Then they got a holding penalty and a procedure call. And uh, on third down 11, they tried to run in through the middle, and Matt Garvis stripped the ball away from the fullback. And uh, we're going to recover that ball in the pile. Great job by our defense. We're in great shape here. We're going to punt them down deep after we couldn't get going on offense. But again, the second problem here with the, the snaps. And Matt, Matt Sneller, two for two, throwing the football here. And uh, Ben Wolford makes a great catch and look, a good strong run over on the sideline there. Unfortunately, he was still short of the first down, but it saved us a lot of field position. Defense had to go back out and uh, try to make something happen. Beautiful play there by San Diego. Play action, one direction, the throwback the other direction, and Lavacek, number 21, making a big play. Then on third down, they try to run off tackle, and Matt Garvis, another fabulous stop. So we get down inside the uh, 10, fourth down and one. Now, they figured this was a great chance to try to make something happen. They had been running the ball well, and too bad for San Diego here. It really was. They fumbled the snap from center. Kind of an anticlimactic deal, but I'll take it, Mick. <laughs> you win a championship, you got to have a little luck. Our guys recovered the ball, and uh, so we stopped them. Now, we're still pinned deep in our territory, and we've had the problems with our punt snapping, so we really felt like we had to try to get out. That was third and five, a pass to Richie Hoskins. We converted it, but we couldn't get any further, and give Scott Kesselring credit. He got a great snap after making a couple of mistakes. We got a beautiful punt out here, and you know now we're breathing just slightly easier. They were five yards away from a touchdown. By the time they got the ball back, it was across midfield, and now the defense feels like they got a little room to work. We really did a good job stopping their running game inside all day long. They used a lot of different formations. They didn't use straight wing T plays, and it was confusing for us, but our guys are getting in the groove. Anthony Fuller there with a tremendous pass breakup, and uh, Matt knows that that was a big play because that uh, forced them to punt. We still had trouble, though. It got into kind of a punting battle in the third quarter, and I show you these punts because two reasons. One, it shows you that Kesselring got back on, on track, and secondly, Matt Sneller with great uh, punting, and Jeff Michaelsick there, number 38, uh, excellent job of coverage. Also, uh, Frankie Herlenbach is 47 there. It was a very motivated, you know, in, intense game, and uh, special teams were very, a very big part of it there as our, as our coverage unit did a good job. Uh, Jeremy Fisher there on third down. A second down play, we had a good run stop. Third down, they completed the pass, and I've never seen a crew take longer, Mick. They studied that thing forever, and they said it was about an inch short, and because San Diego was deep in their own territory, they, uh, they punned it to us. And then Charlie Schimberg breaks up the middle on a trap play. Those linemen inside, Garrett LaFleur, Nate Schneider, Felix Gallagher, Jeff Portman, Matt Jones, and the two tight ends, Charlie Henry and Jason Grabansky, they did a great job all day. And then Grovey breaks a big one. Same play we run, running. He's got about 40 yards here. Uh, San Diego's speed was impressive. I mean, they caught him. Usually he'll run away and make a touchdown on that type of play. But we pounded it. Charlie Schimberg, watch this effort. Five or six yards after the contact. Uh, we got down in here deep. This was a, a play that was too bad for us. So on third and goal, Roy didn't have a hold of the ball. It was sort of bobbling it, coming out of the center. Uh, Charlie Henry was wide open at the top of the screen there on the play action, and Popovich intercepted it. They gave him the ball at the one-yard line where his forward progress was stopped. And, uh, you know, we, we lost a good chance to pad our lead. 
and then give them credit. They came out with a play-action pass on their own one. We didn't expect that with their backs so close to the wall. And they got out of there a little bit. And then on third and 12, we had two good defensive plays. And then on third and 12, they hit a big play. Now, it's 9 nothing. We're just disappointed because we just about had a touchdown or a field goal, you know, and we didn't get it. And then all of a sudden, they're threatening. And the game really turned in their favor right now from a momentum standpoint. And they're going to put a lot of pressure on our defense. But here's where we're going to come through. At the top of your screen, on the right, you're going to see uh, Jeremy Fisher come in and strip the ball away from their fullback. Anthony Fuller uh, came in and made the recovery. That was a huge play. And then we got the ball back, and Pete Lobi right up the middle on the trap. Watch this run. We had guys uh, you know, at all levels of our team, first string, second string, special teams, just making great plays all night long. So we were able to get out of the bad territory there. Good snap again, a good punt by Sneller. You know, rolling down the field, he had three 45-yard punts or more, and uh, you know, all the way down across the 50. So San Diego really was in a difficult position. Now we got some other guys, some fresh legs in there. Mark Goldsberry, who's the backup to Brian Andrews, got in there and got a sack for us. We're counting the clock down, about two minutes, one minute left. They were out of timeouts, and I believe this is the last play of the game here. We blitzed them. Uh, you know, we knew they were going to have to go deep on fourth down. And Kerman Mason makes a pass breakup, and when that ball hit the ground, we knew there was nothing they could do. We ran our victory formation, and uh, coaches down at the bottom. Oh boy, that was cold, Nick. Early shower. <laughs> Early, shower. Early shower. They didn't only get me; they got Coach Hadicek and Coach Neiman both with the water. So it was a great way to end it. You betcha. Congratulations, of course. How good it was the San Diego team now that you've played them. Terrific team. Great athletes. You know, they're probably not as good on offense as they've been the last couple of years. They had Moizo and Steingrieb and, and Rucker, some, some skill guys that were outstanding, but they still have a solid program. Their defense is ex excellent defensive football team, and we were, we were hard-pressed to, to move the ball on them. And I want to mention again, the effort by the uh, Drake Bulldogs, all levels, everybody, the coaching staff players was outstanding in this game. Well, listen, everybody wanted to get this done. Nobody wanted to be involved with a team that came that close after beating Dayton, you know, and not getting the championship. And so everybody played hard, even the special teams guys, backups. We had many backups who came in the game and played well. It was really exciting to see them. Let's take a look at the statistics of this football game. And is that 33 yards passing for the Bulldogs? Yeah, the passing wasn't much, Mick. We just, you know, we ran the ball so well, and they just kept packing it in. But when we tried to throw, they were pretty good at stopping it. But the, the rushing game was key. Uh, you know, the defense, obviously spectacular, holding them to 78 yards. We told our team, Mick, at the beginning of the year, that we would win the league if we could run the ball and stop the run. And if you look at that second line there, 78 yards rushing for them, 289 for us. It translates into, you know, yards. It translates into possession time. And the score, 9 nothing was a whole team effort with the running game, the defense, and the special teams. And, of course, we can take a look at that lake standings. We'll just keep looking at it. Let's just leave that up for the rest of this program. I mean, that's <laughs> so exciting for our program to, to finally, you know, leapfrog over Dayton, get up there, and become an undefeated conference champion. It's, uh, there are still a couple games left, so the final order isn't absolutely decided, but it looks like it'll probably be Dayton in second place at 4-1. and one. Uh, We're nice. We're, we're glad to have it all by ourselves. You betcha. And, of course, you got a nice letter uh, congratulating you from Dayton, I might add. They sent a nice fax to our office right away after the game and, and congratulated us. They said they weren't rooting for us, but after it was over, they were glad we won. Well, our play of the game and also a couple of player interviews are coming up on the Rob A. Show next. You don't have to be a Cyclone fan. Need a Johnny Orr Sports Grill. Everyone is on the home court for a great lunch or dinner here. And at Johnny Orr Sports Grill, you can bring the entire team, from the seasoned veterans to the rookie of the year. You can even book your next event in the banquet and conference center. You don't have to be a Cyclone fan to come into Johnny Orr Sports Grill, but you may be one when you leave. Hey, we, we love it! We love it! We love it! Are you looking for that just right place to hold your company's or club's Christmas party? Well, you found it at the Bavarian House Restaurant in Des Moines. With the cozy old world atmosphere that enhances the holiday spirit and the most delicious dishes in Des Moines. The Bavarian House features American favorites like prime rib and chicken, along with scrumptious German dishes and a dessert menu second to none. Call today to discuss your customized and personalized holiday party at the Bavarian House. 265-5611. That's 265-5611. This message brought to you by Preferred Risk Insurance, America's non-drinkers insurance company. If we can get all of the athletes and coaches in America buying into the, being all that God's created them to be, to understand that they are something special, then we can have an impact across America like no other group because the athletes and coaches have the strongest influence in America today than any other group. And one way to play, one way to play is rub free, one way to live, one way to be what God wants you to be. 
time now for our Capital City Buick Player of the Game. Coach, a lot of great offensive and defensive plays in this one. Which one do you got selected? Well, this week's Play of the Week, I selected uh, one of the four fumbles that our defense caused and recovered against San Diego because the turnovers are, are such a big part of this game. It's not necessarily one that happened at a, at a crucial point in the game, but it was one that our defense did a great job intentionally taking the ball away. Watch Matt Garvis here at the beginning of this play. The fullback has the ball. He's going to get off this block scrape off over the top of the block and make the tackle. Now, you know, Matt's got to make the tackle first, but if he has a chance, he's going to try to strip the ball away. And watch here, as he realizes his hands on the ball, he literally grabs onto it and rips it out of the ball carrier's hands. The fumble was not the San Diego guy's fault. It was just Matt doing a great job getting it done. Uh, and then in the pile, watch Jeremy Fisher right here. He knows it's on the ground. He's going to dive over the top of the pile and it's squirted out underneath somebody's legs. And right down underneath here, you're going to see him dig in there and take it out and grab the football. I mean, the things that go on in these piles are amazing, but he's, you know, he's got his eye on the ball. He found the football, took it away from everybody else, and when they sorted it all out, you're going to see Jeremy coming out. There he is. He's down at the bottom there. You see the football right in there. He's got it in his hands. They've given it to Drake. And it's that type of, of aggressiveness trying to get in and, first of all, take the ball away and then make sure we recover it. It happened four times in this game. It's happened all year long, and that's one of the reasons why we were so successful on defense and as a team. Time now for a home team pizza player interview. And had I known the interviews were going to be poolside in San Diego, I would have offered my duty, of course, to go out there. But head coach Rob Ash had an opportunity to talk with the captains. Obviously, this is Rob Ash. We're standing here poolside in San Diego. This is Sunday right after we won the conference championship last night. I'm standing here with my two captains of the 1995 champions, Rich Hoskins and Matt Garvis. And the uh, only thing i got to say is uh, you guys did a great job. Tremendous leaders for the for this whole team. Everybody's sitting around here listening. I want to know how you guys feel about being captains of the conference champs. Well, it's unbelievable. I never thought actually coming into the season that we'd be able to go 5-0 in conference. Uh, until the first and second game, we really gelled as a team, came together, and everybody was, was in it together. And we came through, finally. What was the secret, Richie? Why did this team win the league? And, you know, we've had good teams in the past. What was the difference? Well, we stick with that unity on offense, the unity uh, word. So, uh, once Coach Hadachek instilled that in us, and uh, you guys really uh, got me into the unity concept, I think that really helped the offense come together. And I think it did, too. And it, that unity thing, you know, we, we, it wasn't just on the field. It was a unity off the, off field. the field that we talked about, too. You yep. know, the fact that the, we actually had the unity council this year uh -huh. to help take care of team discipline and team problems, and you think that contributed also? Yeah, it definitely did. The, the team uh, discipline concept worked well. Uh, a lot of trust in the players and uh, the leaders in the team. It was, uh, gave us a lot of confidence as captains, definitely. That's good. Obviously a defensive guy in the middle, Matt Garvis. Great game last night, Matt. 20-some tackles. All right. And what do you think was the secret? Why did this team win? Uh, and defensively, I mean, we just played real well as a unit. We were real close friends. And uh, like Richie said, it's team unity. And uh, this is the funnest defense I've ever been part of my four years here. And uh, we just had a lot of fun on the field. We didn't get down out there. We just gelled as a unit, and uh, coach did a real good job uh, preparing us for the games. Yeah. Did you ever get concerned last night, Matt, when they were driving down the field? Tell me honestly. Uh, maybe a little bit, but uh, defense, we said in the huddle, we just said we we're going to stop them right here. We knew we were going to shut them out. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell them the truth. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. Yeah, and uh, and uh, we, just, we just had a lot of fun out there last night and, uh, for the whole season. Yeah. That's, what, that's what football's all about. Yeah. Hey, and the, obviously everybody's wired about winning this thing. They're giving these guys a hard time, but they're, they're going to get their shot here in just a minute. I'm going to ask a couple of the seniors that, uh, since we have a, such a good group of seniors, I'm going to ask them to come up, and I'm going to get the captains get the first shot at, at getting back at somebody. So, Richie, you pick out an offensive senior to get up here and talk, all right? And unfortunately, that's all the time we have for the interviews. Of course, next week, the Drake Bulldogs do have an open date. So next week's show, we're going to have an opportunity to talk with some of the different seniors on this uh, Pioneer League uh, conference winning team. Well, it's going to be a, a good time, Nick. We're, we're going to include on next week's program some shots from our trip to San Diego. And we'll continue those interviews poolside. With, we talked with every senior. And there are a lot of good comments, a lot of, a lot of guys that deserve to be recognized. So it's kind of nice to be able to use two shows to do it. Well, uh, good. And of course, we'll see more of Rob Ash next to the uh, pool, and Mick True is not. We'll have more with the head coach, <laughs> Rob Ash, right after this.
It's apparent when you arrive at Legends that you have come to a special place. West Des Moines' newest in place is more than a sports bar. It's a sports grill or, more exact, a full-service family menu restaurant. We defy you to find a seat that doesn't have a comfortable TV viewing. What, with 21 TVs and two satellite dishes, you can relax, eat, drink, and enjoy watching your favorite sport. If that happens to be darts, we're sure you can find a game. Legends was named correctly. It already is. 60th and Ashworth Road, West Des Moines. Open at 11 a.m. daily. When home team pizza delivers, we never know quite what to expect. But you know what to expect. Home team pizza's here! Yeah! Home team pizza's here with the new huger huge 20-inch pizza. Right now, get a single topping for only $9.99. Pick up for free delivery in Greater Des Moines, Ames, and Ankeny. Quality. Style. Luxury. Everything you've come to expect from Buick. Selection. Service. Value. All you can expect when you visit Capital City Buick. From the Skylark to the Park Avenue Ultra, Capital City Buick offers Central Iowa's largest selection of new Buicks and has quietly built a reputation for genuine service, not pressure. Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leader. Now let me get this straight. You want me to get up at 11.45 on Sunday morning, watch you guys on game day for an hour and 15 minutes, talking about all the upcoming games, and watch all the games for six hours, then turn back to watch you guys on prime time to wrap up all the games for another hour? In other words, over eight hours of nonstop football? Yeah! All right, I love it. All right, Usually during this time, we talk about the upcoming game for the Drake Bulldogs. The Bulldogs do have a bye week, so let's talk about the conference championship for Drake. Coach, what exactly does it mean for your coaching staff and your program? Mick, this is a great moment for Drake football. I mean, obviously, since the league was formed three years ago, uh, we set our goal to try to win the conference championship. Our players have been working hard, running at 6 a.m. in the morning in the winter and lifting weights and all summer long, coaches with long hours and, and so on, with the goal, you know, the motivation being trying to win the league. But the first two years, it's always been, you know, the Dayton Flyers. They were undefeated the first year, conference champs. They were 4-1 and one last year, conference champs. And, you know, it was beginning to look like it was going to be the Dayton League, you know. And, and this year, we were able to get over the hump. We got by Dayton, we defeated them, and then we finished the drill and we, and we won the league. And now we've got a huge momentum going into the future, I think. You know, with that accomplishment, it's given some balance to the league and a great name for our program. I know there's so many people, of course, that were an important part for the uh, Drake Bulldogs in this championship. Too many to mention, of course, but uh, coaching staff. Well, you did a great job. Well, thank you, Mick. And, you know, I don't do it by myself, obviously. And the two guys I want to make sure I mention are the two coordinators, Joe Hadichek and Jay Neiman. And you know, we've all been together since the first year I was here. Uh, it's been a three-man deal trying to get this thing going as far as in the office. Our two GAs, Dale Plessel and, and Dave Doran, have done wonders this year. Jerry Hanks, my secretary. Those are the people in the office. But there's many more, lots of assistant coaches and volunteers. I can't name them all. I see the clock running down here on our time. But everybody's involved in this program through the players, managers, and everyone else. We're thrilled about it. We want to build on it. We're really excited. Well, Coach, again, congratulations on that championship. Thank you. Next week, of course, we'll have more interviews that were taken in San Diego by the pool with head coach Rob Ash, <laughs> and we'll have those coming up on the Rob Ash Show. Join us.